Welcome to the NWI.com Political Roundtable for Thursday, April 5th. I'm Robert Blaskowitz, Assistant Managing Editor of The Times. Join with me today, Doug Ross, Editorial Hi. Page Editor of The Times, Times columnist Mark Kiesling. Uh, lots to talk about uh, this week. We'll jump right in uh, with the results of uh, the poll that were, was just released this afternoon. Right. Uh, everyone's watching the, the uh, Indiana Senate primary race, or the U.S. Senate primary race, between incumbent uh, Richard Luger and Indiana State Treasurer Richard Murdoch. Uh, some somewhat good news for Luger in that he has a seven-point lead, but it's not all good news, is it, Doug? No, I mean, you know, he's, uh, he's an incumbent. He's been in there for, you know, as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I mean, 19, what, 77? 76. 76? Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, so he began serving in 77. Right, so, correct. He was elected uh, in 76, yeah. right. he was serving in right. 77. So, uh, you know, he's he's got all this name recognition. You know, he's a guy who's been, um, you know, really he stands to be chairman of yeah. foreign relations if he wants yeah. to be. People have so, made up their minds probably about Rich, Richard Luger, but if he's only at 42 percent with a high amount of undecideds, that means there is room for Richard Murdoch to step There's in a possibility. But yeah, uh, I mean, close to a third of them are undecided. So. I, I, you know, I, I've got to, I've got to believe that the undecideds are going to go for Luger. Uh, it's, it, mm -hmm. I think the incumbent always has an edge over the uh, challenger. So, well, we'll just see what, we'll just yeah, see what happens. There is a I debate next week, and uh, I'll I'm, be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. Uh, People are mm -hmm. in Indiana are convinced uh, about the like a Tea Party candidate like Murdoch. Uh, well, you know, we'll have to see. Right, right. And there is a debate between the two candidates uh, next Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to be uh, planning on uh, doing a live chat, uh, kind of giving running commentary and on on the debate uh, when it happens. I think it's at 6 p.m. next uh, next Wednesday. So join us online for that. But uh, right. that that may go a long way in in, this, in you know helping. Those undecideds decide. Right, and, and this is not the only race in that poll. Uh, it looked at like the presidential mm -hmm. race, and, uh, and and this has a bearing, I think, mm -hmm. on the Senate race, as that Santorum has a one-point lead yeah. in Indiana over Romney. Uh, you know, this is like if the election were held today, who would you vote yeah. for? Uh, and and that says a lot, I think, about the you know types of Republicans we have in Indiana. Sure, and I still I still think that uh, at the at election time. Romney will overcome the, uh, the Santorum vote. Well, it might be decided by then yeah. anyway. But yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's why Indiana moved its primary up during the Obama race because they wanted to they wanted to actually be a player in that race. I don't think they well, moved. They didn't. Illinois, Illinois did. Illinois moved it up. Yeah. Illinois, Illinois, moved, Illinois up. moved it up. Indiana stayed the same, but they ended up being a player just because right. of how close that race was. Which of um, course turned out to be a disaster because Lake County was the last county to right. come in. Okay. Right. Um, uh, moving on to we'll the other big there. the other big state story going on today uh, was the announcement that um, $206 million had basically been uh, held back from counties. Uh, th this, this was money that was uh, paid into the, uh, the uh, basically county option income taxes right. uh, that should have gone back out from the state to the counties that, that 206 million dollars that they found that that had not been paid uh, so Lake County doesn't get any piece of that right. because there is no income tax right. option. But Porter and LaPorte County. But yeah, so every, every other yeah. county Porter got more than three million dollars that that you know they'll they'll get I think on Friday that they should have gotten already so um, what does this say about um, the Daniels administration and this coming on the heels of what happened in December, which was them suddenly finding $320 million that, that had not been appropriately put into the general fund. Right. I'm, uh, you know, I think this is a huge blemish for the uh, Daniels administration. It's coming during uh, the same week as final arguments for the uh, IBM uh, uh, versus Indiana case. You know, that was the welfare privatization, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that turned out badly. Um, so I think this is this is really going to hurt uh, the Daniels legacy. Now, um, we should acknowledge that the uh, commissioner of the Department of Revenue, you know, basically fell on a sword, mm -hmm. uh, as, as did the uh, head IT guy, the the CFO. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's there yeah. were heads rolling in that department. And well, I'm not, but are you are you saying, you know, in respect to Mitch Daniels, that the buck stops here? 
You know, you're saying, well, he's the governor. Hey, I mean, well, Demo I know, Democrats yeah, had he's how, one with the big much, desk. How, how much responsibility do you see him take for that? Well, back in December, Democrats had called for an audit of the department, and Republicans, including Daniels, resisted that, that call for an audit. Now there will be an audit yeah. after this latest mistake. Well, so. I, I mean, you know, uh, you've got people like Vi Simpson and, and uh, uh, Pat Bauer, basically mm -hmm. the you know two huge uh, Democratic leaders, right. saying, we told you so. Yeah. Well, um, but again, how much of that can be attributed to the governorship and how much of that is just uh, at a lower, a lower level, if you will? Well, this is the same as, as uh, holding President Obama accountable for the economy. Well, you can't, I mean, this you, is you can't hold President Obama accountable for the economy. The economy is what it is. Oh, well, yeah. see, in November, I mean, voters do, I mean, though. Yeah, hold, yeah, I know. Whether you can or not, right. people it, do. Like, it, it, yeah. The federal, you know, you, you, he's got the Federal Reserve Chairman. and you right. know, he, he, he can I mean, look at the GSA. So, he can only do so much. Look at the GSA. They, they had he the, held this wild, crazy uh, um, uh, Las Vegas convention mm -hmm. with, you know, all of these all the spending, really odd spending. Yeah. And, and this for an agency that is supposed to watch federal spending. And they were just blowing money yeah. on, on frivolous stuff. So, you know, what happened then? The head of the GSA, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the head role, yeah. basically. Well, I mean, I'm not particularly an Obama fan. But I, I'm, I'm going to say the man cannot be held responsible for the current state of the economy entirely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are other people underneath him who are supposed to be dealing with that. And I think the same is true. The Republican, like Mitch Daniels, I mean, there are people no, underneath no. him mm -hmm. that are expected to be expected to perform. Well, let's shift to our third topic, which, Doug, is somewhat related it's, to our it's, first it's two. Really, yes, exactly. Uh, uh, I was saying as we put the list of topics down, what do these all have in common? Well, it's, you know, the sagging bottom line. And we're talking about sagging pants here. Now we're going to move locally, uh, not, not, not nationally, not <laughs> statewide, but locally. On both got, sides of the state on, line. On both sides of the state mm -hmm. line. You've got Merrillville proposing an ordinance to ban sagging pants mm -hmm. and you've got uh, school uh, Thornton Fractional High School District 215 uh, considering um, not an ordinance but what, whatever you want to call it a policy to ban sagging pants in the district and the village of Linwood already bans sagging pants uh, Illinois and Florida have already had their laws against sagging pants upheld the, the we're talking major crackdown here. All right, here we go again. Um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, there's a crack problem out there, yeah. and but it has and this is the crack epidemic right. uh, you don't has, hear about. Yeah. It has nothing to on do with both drugs. sides of the state line. On both sides of the state line, which would make it a full moon. Exactly. <laughs> oh my no, God. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think this will attract more viewers, but. Um, the fact is that the sagging pants come from the fact that when you go to jail, they remove your belt because they don't want you to hang yourself with the belt. Or therefore, hang somebody else. Mm -hmm. right. he, or, or someone else. Or therefore, the, your pants sag. Now, it's, it's kind of a statement like, you know, I'm a gangster. I can, you know, I, I, I'm street. Street I cred yeah, kind of thing. Street cred kind yeah. of thing. And uh, it's a gangster he, unwrap, you might say. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, you're just making me unable to keep up here. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's, it's important to, to note that, you know, both the municipality and the school district mm -hmm. are taking this seriously. They're saying, hey, you know what? We, we just don't want this kind of statement to be held in our, our, our area. Now, uh, in Illinois, it's been upheld as constitutional. Merrillville has, the Merrillville officials have expressed some reluctance because they're afraid of constitutionality issues. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, Well, the way the Indiana Supreme Court's been, who knows what they're Who knows? thinking lately. The Indiana Supreme Court has become 
kind of a crapshoot. Mm -hmm. It's it, you, you know it, it you don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. It, it, are they going to go conservative? Are they going to go liberal? You don't know because they have gone both ways. And, right. But, well, you know, uh, Maribel hopefully will uh, uh, figure out that this is you know really it, it, the bottom line is that we're. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to waste that joke. Uh, so, so you know, basically, what it comes down to is the perception of law and order in your mm -hmm. community. You know, when when you look at fashion trends and and they are um, um, basically uh, glamorizing mm -hmm. the criminal element, then correct. You know, you have to do something well, and, about and, it. And and there are things. I, I, I was talking to a District 215 teacher uh, yesterday, and I, and I, I was I said. Well, what would you do, you know, what, what, what would happen if a student walked in with a t-shirt that said, F you, you know? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, they'd be sent right home mm -hmm. and change that t-shirt. And I said, well, so what's the, di the difference between that and, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, sagging pants issue? And she said, nothing. Mm -hmm. She said, it's just, it, it's a policy yeah. and that's the way it goes. I think they've got more latitude in the schools. Yeah, certainly than, schools right. have the power right. to enforce any kind of dress code that they right. want. Just exactly. About. Well, more so or less. But within the, reason, yeah. right. But, but this is within reason. Yeah. So. Um, but how about, how about uh, a town like Miraville? Uh, do you have any opinion about uh, whether a town should be able to enforce such an ordinance? Well, this becomes a decency issue. I mean, you know, you... you wouldn't want to, uh, um, not to mention a, I don't a matter of priorities. Butt crack. That is my that is my bottom right. line. Right, but but also, do you want to have police spend their time enforcing this law as well? So right. that's the other part. You know, that's the other side well, of it. That, there there that, are yeah, that's kind know. of a waste of their time. Right, but I mean, what, no pun I mean, intended. What, <laughs> that was not. They don't want you doing I a hitch in jail. Because that was not. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going there, but okay. Um, but and where do you stop? What if, what if uh, some woman decides that she's warm that day and wants to go topless? Do you, or what, or, or what if, you know, a restaurant? Maryville's going to be getting a lot of visitors, I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, might I, stop, I might stop out there. But um, if that happens, I'm not stopping out to see butt cracks, though. Well, there you go. On, on Not that, on guys, anyway. and on that note, that's all. The We're going to go out and have a stuff belt later. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I wish you hadn't gone there. Okay. Okay. Now you can you can tune yeah. in, and you know what? This is probably inter, this is an inappropriate thing to say on Holy Week, so yeah. I'm just going to apologize for it. Good. And and wish everyone a happy and Easter wish and everyone a happy, happy Passover, Passover and so happy, forth and so happy on. Happy Easter. Absolutely. So thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another political roundtable.